Welcome back. I hope you found that interesting. Here we have our first exercise. I've named it Collect Words. I make an empty list. I go forever collecting words. If they don't give me one, I'm done. Otherwise, I'm making the uppercase version of the word. If it's already in these words, I'll say it's already given. Otherwise, I'll put it in there, and now it's there. So I'm collecting words from the user until I'm not given one, which case I break out and I sort it. Now, our specification is that they should be uppercased, and they already are, and separated. And there we are putting and between each of the words and adding some exclamation points. So that's the first one. And... The important point was the start. Now this one, 110 underscore 2, I have done several ways. It's a significant problem. I hope that you didn't look at the answer to this one before you're looking at it now with me because it'll be really confusing. I do in here a very strange thing. One, two, three, four functions that I gave the identifier reverse name. The truth is that only the last one is alive by the time the interpreter hits main. But I tested them all. And what the interpreter does is it, when it interprets, it comes on down here and sees that def word. Therefore, it makes that identifier and it makes this function object and puts that identifier upon it. But then it comes down to that def word and it moves that identifier over to this function object. And then it moves it again and again. Well, all these are different ways to approach this exercise. Let's look at our main. Here are the names I gave you. I deliberately gave you one that had three names so that you would make your code flexible enough to accept any number of names. And here we have two guys named Sparrow. Okay, reverse them. Well, look at this. This is embedded inside of main. Now, that is a common technique in Python. It's very useful. This is a private to this main. No other function can see it. And then we make another reverse them, so only this one is alive by the time we call it. But I've tested them both. Well, look at this one. This one's alive. For each of my names, I'm going to do what I just did before. I have an empty list. I'm always going to make that list with what I want reversed this time. So reverse name is going to return to me last name, comma, first names. Last name, comma, first names. I can sort them up and print them out. Now that is a straightforward way. I cannot complain about anybody doing that. That makes a lot of sense. But we'll look at this one where we use a key. Now we're going to sort them by the key. And the key is reverse name, no parens, because it's a callback function, meaning that the sorted facility is going to call it over and over, once for each name, then sort up the names, but not by the names, by the return value of reverse name. So that means last name first. They'll get sorted that way, but they get returned by the original name. It's an important point to remember, and I, I hope this points it out. You never see the return value of the key. Unless you need it. Then you have to call it again, because we want to print it out by last name first. So here we're doing that. We're pushing it through reverse name again. OK, let's look at our reverse names. A lot of string manipulation. Here we're doing name split. Well, that's going to give us a list of each of the names, no matter how many there are. We're going to return the last name. 
with a comma space, and then we'll space join up all the rest of them. So we got to use this slice, which I like a lot. Everything but the last one, because the last one was there. That's one way. Here we did the split again, but this time we're doing a pop. And what pop exactly does is pops out the last one, the minus one one, and it's no longer in parts. So that's all I have to do, the same I did before. Now an interesting call, particularly for this assignment, is the R split. That means to split by the right. Now if you're using R split, it's because you want to say how many times you want things split off of it from the right. And we want one name. So we're going to split off one name. Now the default R split, just like the default split, is any white space. So in order to put that one in the second argument, I'd have to put in here all the possible white space. Now that's hard. There is a string library that gives it to me, but that's difficult and error prone. For this method, and only this method, you can instead of putting in an argument, put in the word none. And then our split will use the default. So this splits the last one off by white space. So we're left with two parts, the exact two parts we want. Parts minus one, that's the last name, and we tack on parts zero. One more. Let's just split that name. We have no idea how many pieces are in there, but we'll collect all of them but one into first names. So then we'll do last name, and then our, there's our comma, and space separate up whatever's left. Okay, that was a very meaty exercise. I hope you learned a lot. And I'll see you in the next lab.